what's up guys welcome back thanks for joining me once again so today we're talking about something good baby talking about being born again being born again this is going to bring a lot of clarity a lot of clarity to people maybe just coming to the faith and also people maybe who are in the faith for a while or maybe if you're a catholic or people who kind of grew up in the faith never really made their their relationship their own kind of been caught up in religion a little bit this is going to be good this is going to holy spirit's going to speak to us today like he always does all right so we're talking about being born again what does it mean to be born again i got three questions for us what does it mean to be born again how am i born again and how do I know if I'm born again? The term being born again is found in John 3.3. 3. Jesus is talking to a religious leader of that day, Nicodemus. And he's explaining some things to him. Check it out. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. <clears throat> Amen. So Jesus makes it very clear that this is crucial to our lives. We have to be reborn. We have to be born again to go to heaven and have fellowship with God. So before I directly answer these questions, I want to start with this. It's important to make sure that we're walking in the light. The Bible makes a bunch of statements referencing the light. Jesus actually called himself the light of the world. Okay? So John 8, 12. <clears throat> Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So when we follow Jesus, he gives us his life. He gives us the light of life, the Holy Spirit, the light in us. Okay. So watch this. John 12, 35. So Jesus, Jesus said to them, the light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. So whoever walks in darkness has no idea where he's going. This is why I'm starting here. If we are walking in darkness, we can't see. We can't see. And I want you to see this. Man. This is so important. Alright, check it out. 1 John 2, 9 through 11. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light. And in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So listen closely. John says, the darkness can blind our eyes, but if we abide in the light, we're able to see. So just try to catch what I'm portraying here. I'm trying to prove a point. It's all gonna come together. First Peter 2.9 
But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. So let's just take a moment, man, and hear what God is saying to us. Jesus, right now, is calling us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. But we need to respond to that call. We need to respond. Picture it like this. Someone is calling you on your phone, on your iPhone. And if you don't have an iPhone, mostly every phone nowadays, you have to either slide or press the accept button. In the old school phones, you flipped it open to receive the call. If you want to understand these things that Jesus is talking about right now, you got to pick it up. You got to receive the call. How are you going to hear him if you don't respond to the call, if you don't press accept? You got to answer the phone, right? Jesus called those who believe in him the light of the world. But right now, he's shining his light through me by the Holy Spirit and by his word right because psalms 119 psalms 119 105 says that his word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path okay so right now he's shining his light through me onto you to try to show you what's going on but we got to respond to the call to make the light our own you want the light to be your own you gotta respond to the call to become the temple of the holy spirit where his light is dwelling in us exposing the darkness so before we get into this to the study about being born again i just want you to make a conscious decision if you haven't already in your mind or out loud you can speak it out loud just say jesus i'm listening I answer your call right now. I'm attentive to your voice. Unblind my eyes and lead me into the light. Amen, amen. All right. <clears throat> All right, so now let's go back to our first two questions. What does it mean to be born again? And how am I born again? Okay, so let's read 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 21. I know I'm, leading, I'm reading a lot of scripture, but it's all going to come together like a beautiful picture. Wow, you see that? That's the Holy Spirit. I didn't try to rhyme that. Holy Spirit is an artist, huh? Holy Spirit flow. <laughs> Holy Spirit rap. All right, ready? 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 21. For the love of Christ <clears throat> controls us because we have concluded this that one has died for all therefore all have died and he died for all that those who might live no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised from now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him like this no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old, have pa the old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. So right here, Paul is referring to the born-again experience. There's a moment with God where you believe in his existence. You believe in him when he shows us we all need a savior, we fall very short compared to his moral law. You believe in the price that he paid on the cross for you, and you ask for his forgiveness so you can be made right in his sight and can be free from the wrath of God. After this takes place in your heart, you're born again. If you genuinely believe in what he did for you 
and you have faith. You're born again. And now you can walk in repentance. By His grace, you have new desires. That's a big key to being born again. Your desires change. Your desires change. So if you still live in sin, and you happily live in sin, you still happily do things that the Bible calls sinful, you have to check your heart. Sin should disgust you. It should be disgusting. You should not want to do it. Even if you're caught up doing certain things, maybe you're fighting with sin, it should bother you. There should be a, a godly conviction in you. That's a big key to being born again. Your desires change. Check your heart. Take invent inventory of your heart and see what's going on in there. Am I born again? Do I still live the same life I lived before I came to Jesus? Or did something change in a moment when I prayed that prayer? When I genuinely believed in Jesus and what he did for me? Was there any change that took place? Now, I'm not saying your whole life changes in a moment where you're perfect, <clears throat> but you should have different desires, okay? You should want to live in the light as he is in the light. All right, so let's continue. In 2 Corinthians, all of this is from God. I'll say that again. <laughs> I'll say that again, baby. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. That's what I'm giving to you right now. He entrusted me with the message of reconciliation that I'm giving to you right now beautiful therefore we are ambassadors for christ god making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of christ being reconciled to god for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin jesus was perfect he didn't sin at all he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen, amen. So that's what it is, man. Salvation comes through faith. We believe in him. We ask for his forgiveness. And he changes us from the inside out. There has to be a change in your heart. There has to be a change in your heart. So now this leads us to our third question. How do I know I am saved? How do I know that I'm saved? All right, so we just spoke about how there needs to be a change. Your desires should change. Okay, so I'm going to start here in James. James chapter 2, verse 14. And I'm going to put all the scriptures on the screen so it's easy for you guys to follow along. I know I'm reading a lot of scriptures today, but I got them, man. This is important. This is very important. We have to understand this because you don't want to go through your whole life thinking that you're okay. Thinking that you're good and then one day when you face God and you die and you go to and you and you face God on judgment. And he looks at you and says, I never knew you. And in that moment, there's clarity. And you're like, wow, I was wrong. I wasn't okay. That's the scariest moment anyone can ever have. Don't let it be you. Let's understand this right now. So James 2. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace and keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs what good is it in the same way by faith itself 
In the same way faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder, you foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? <clears throat> on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. Alright, so there's a lot there right now. So he made a good example. If you pass somebody who's on the street, and they're dying, they need food, they need shelter, they need water, and you just say, alright, go in peace. You know, you're not helping them. You need to do something to help them. Give them some food. Give them some water. Give them something. Your actions show your heart. That's what he's saying. So your actions are going to show what you believe in this life. Another example, like say, say you're telling everybody that you're good at baseball. Right? You got a lot of knowledge about the sport. And you're saying that you're good. You're saying that you got the skills. But when you step on that field, you're awkward. You have no idea what you're doing. See, talk is cheap. If I could put it that way. Your actions have to back up what you're saying. And that's what James is saying here. Okay? So if you say that you know Jesus, but you live like the devil... You live completely contrary to Jesus. And Jesus is calling his believers to follow him. People aren't going to believe that you are a follower of Christ. That you are saved. And God is going to look at you and say, I never knew you. So you believing is going to be shown by your fruit. Jesus said you'll know them by their fruit. If a tree is called an apple tree and it's not bearing any apples it is not an apple tree right but this type of fruit is it doesn't come like from your works and from how good you are it comes from true faith and genuine belief in Jesus and what he did for you all right so that brings me to Ephesians 2 8 through 10 I gotta prove another I gotta make another point here because People are going to get uh, confused if I just leave it there. Alright, so Ephesians 2. <clears throat> For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works. So that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which God has prepared in advance for us to do. All right, so if you read James 2 and then you re and then you read Ephesians Ephesians 2, you're going to be like that's a direct contradiction. I don't get that at all. James is saying it's works that you're saved, it's faith with works. James literally says it's by works that you're saved. And Paul is saying it's by faith and faith alone. So, how does that make sense? How can that be in unison? They're not contradicting each other. James is just saying, like I said, your actions will be proven by what you believe. See, we're not we're not saved by what we do, because then Jesus wouldn't have had to die. It's by what Jesus did for us and by what we believe and our faith in Jesus. Okay? But your faith Genuine faith is proven. A, by a byproduct of genuine faith is the fruit of your life. 
there should be a change from the inside out. Like I said earlier, your desires should change. Sin should not be in your vocabulary anymore. You shouldn't want to sin anymore. And if you do, there's a conviction and it doesn't feel good. He removes the sin from your heart. But he doesn't remove your ability to sin. He just takes the desire away. And he wants you to choose in your free will. To want to follow him. And when you make that decision. And you surrender. Because you know in that moment. I can't live in sin anymore. I could try to. But I'm going to be miserable. And when you finally surrender. He gives you the grace through the Holy Spirit. To walk out the life. That you're called to walk in that you're called to live that's a true born again experience that's a true christian amen amen so we gotta check our hearts we gotta take inventory we gotta come before god with a humble heart and ask him Say, Lord, if there's anything in me that's not pleasing to you, change me. Create in me a clean heart. Be genuine before God. Don't dance around these questions. How do I know if I'm born again? Am I born again? Don't dance around it. Be honest with yourself. Was there a real change in my heart? Or do I live the same life that I lived before Jesus came into my life? And if that's you right now, when you genuinely repent of that and come before God with a pure heart, see the Bible says that the pure in heart shall see God. The pure in heart, humble, genuine. You're not coming to God looking for something and you don't have a hidden agenda. No, you genuinely are coming before God in faith in repentance asking for forgiveness and he's gonna meet you in that place he's gonna meet you right where you're at we don't come to God all cleaned up already where we fix our own life before we come to God we come to God so that he can clean us so he can make us right there's nothing that you have to do before you come to Jesus. You just got to willingly and humbly come to him, knowing that you need him, knowing that he is your savior. And he takes it from there. He'll help you walk in repentance through his spirit. He gives us all the grace and everything we need to live a godly life. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So when we're poor in spirit, what does that mean? When we come before God broken, knowing that we're poor, spiritually we're poor. That's where we need to be, because we're all spiritually poor. We don't have what it takes be righteous he needs to clean us there's nothing you can do to clean yourself let God clean you today let him change your heart let him change your desires let him do what he does so I just want to lead you guys in in prayer for anybody that doesn't know Jesus or anybody who never took this step of faith in believing in God I just want to lead you in this prayer. So if you want to come to Jesus today, you want to make him Lord of your life, you want to be saved and have eternal security, just pray with me. Bow your heads. Just say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and that you rose from the dead. And I turn from my sin and I invite you to come into my heart and into my life. I trust you 
and I follow you as my Lord and my Savior. And I just ask you, Holy Spirit, to live in me and empower me to walk this, this life out in your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So if you just prayed that prayer, I just encourage you to get with people who are like-minded, get yourself in a good church, and make sure that you, you look into the church, that it's a solid church, and get connected with people, man, who are like-minded. You don't want to try to do this alone. You know, get in a good fellowship. Your desires are going to be changed. You're going to want to go deeper with God. So get in prayer. Ask God to lead you around the right people. Lead you to a good church. And start walking this out, man. Your life is completely changed, man. I remember when I first came to God. He saved me. He pulled me out of the mud. I was drowning in the mud, face down. Couldn't even breathe. And he showed me who I am. Thank you, Lord. Trust him with your life. He'll never leave us or forsake us. He's always with us. He's a good father. He's gonna father you. He's gonna teach you. And he's gonna change you from the inside out. Praise you, Lord. Let's just worship him right now, man. Praise you, Jesus. Realign our hearts, Lord. Help me keep the first things first. promise a perfect life he said we're gonna go through some things but remember he overcame the world through his son I don't have to go through these things alone anymore and all these different things that we're going through they're gonna refine us they're preparing us when we meet him in heaven we're born again baby this ain't religion don't get it twisted. This is not religion. This is Jesus. One again. New man. 